Hi, I am Pastor Ayanda, and uh, welcome again to another uh, podcast upload. And wherever you are listening it uh, at, it's called Messages from Isolation. And today I'm outside. I thought on these days um, of self isolation, it doesn't mean that you have to always just be confined inside the house. You could be outside, you know, enjoying the fresh breeze, fresh wind, a bit of sun. You know, just come outside. If you have a backyard, you know, you can sit outside and just enjoy. Of course, keep on with the regulations of um, sanitizing your hand, wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap, um, sanitize with the alcohol-based sanitizer. Whatever you can do to try and stop the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, you know, I was thinking um, last night and it is the thought that of course the pandemic has brought us into a situation that maybe the 21st century is not really used to. For instance, um, when you talk to uh, or look at documentaries from the wartime, you know, you, you listen to the generals or even the presidents, they'll tell you one thing that during wartime, you're always prepared, especially if you're fighting an enemy, a country against another country. Um, the generals will, will have a military strategy in place. They would um, look at their military and see if they are soldiers, they have enough soldiers to combat the enemy. But also they'll spend enough time working with the intelligence community to study and learn their enemies. Because you don't want to go to war unprepared and not knowing what your enemy is capable of. And so, especially during the Second World War, what you would find is that propaganda was very rife um, because England had its own propaganda, Germany had its own propaganda, and later on America had its own propaganda. But the spike of propaganda, it happened during the Cold War where America and Russia were preparing for a war, you know, and so in order for them to win the war, they had to spend enough resources or a lot of resources into propaganda and why they did that in order to scare the other opponent that if you strike us we have enough uh, nuclear weapons or we have enough um, soldiers or we have this we have that you know because that is the strategy of war uh, apart from just engaging your enemy you needed to have some sort of propaganda that you push in order for your enemy to be afraid and it's almost similar to the time we're living in. Of course, we are not at war with anybody per se, but we are at war with the COVID-19 pandemic. It, it has everybody on their toes. Everybody's scared. Everybody is um, on their edge. Uh, people are getting used to an environment that they thought they will never be part of. So it is a war on COVID. It's not specific against anybody. And I want to emphasize that that uh, COVID-19 is not against a particular race, it's not against a particular country, it's not against a particular tribe, you know. COVID is everybody's problem and that is why all of us together with the medical professionals and the scientific community, we can curve it if only we work together. Now, but the thing is, when you, when, when you read up on, on Corona, what do you find that, uh, especially nowadays, because we are living in social media, Anybody just gets on the phone, they post a video on their bedside. You see news reports about what is happening with patients who are suffering. And it is scary, you know, it is scary. Just the other day I was looking at a video upload of a lady who was in England. You know, she's on her bedside and she was talking about the dangers of going outside when you don't have to and all that stuff. And she was struggling to breathe. And, and, and I was thinking, I said, you know, uh, even in the Bible, especially when you read Malachi 3 verse 6, it says, I the Lord do not change and that's why you sons of Jacob are not consumed. And when you look at that text, when I looked at it and reflected on it, Malachi, uh, that book was written after the exile of Babylon. You know, so the country was trying to find its feet again. Um, they were trying to get back on the feet because for 70 years they had been in Babylon and so now they had come back to Judah and Jerusalem and they were trying to figure their lives out. It's similar 
to what's going to happen after the COVID-19. There'll be times where people, now they're gonna try and adjust to the new normal, which will be at the time. And, and, and of course, things are not gonna go back to normal as we knew it. Things are gonna be different. And, 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 and of course, in Israel, they had to restart again with the temple uh, services, sacrificing, worship, all those things. They had to start all over again. And, and as they were starting all over again with those things, you know, there were things that were not uh, properly implemented like how God had instructed them to do. So you found that the, 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 the prophets and the, not really the prophets, but the priests, they were not implementing the right things, you know, and so God speaks on that in terms of tithe and offering that people were robbing him. But when God says, I, the Lord, do not change, that's why you sons of Jacob are not consumed. The other aspect of it, as they were rebuilding in, 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 in Jerusalem, there was also a threat from nations around because you know when you've been beaten by somebody else other people they will sense blood in the water as the saying goes and they would want to also imprison you because you are vulnerable your military is is in shreds your commanders you have no king and everything so everybody would want to try and 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 and, and, and colonize you again enslave you and everything and so at that time when the book was written there was also a threat of, of, of um, invasion. And so when God gave them that oracle saying, I, the Lord, do not do change, do not change. That's why you sons of Jacob are not consumed. What God was saying, that no matter what might be happening around you, no matter that uh, the nations around you may threaten, the only thing they can do is only threaten. But if you return to me, I will return to you. And that is why I, the Lord, do not change. And when God says, I, the Lord, do not change, he was taking them back to the promises that he had given his, uh, his, 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 his prophets or the patriarchs, Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, all those people saying, Israel will still prosper regardless as long as they follow me. And so as you, I know, most of you are worried about what life is going to be like after the coronavirus. Some of you are worried about your businesses. Some of you are worried about your relationships because some of you are going to be apart for a very long time. You don't even know what's going to happen. But I'm here this today to assure you that God says, I, the Lord, do not change. God says, I know the promises that I've given you. I know the promises that I've made to you. And the beauty of God is that he was there when he was making the promises. He was there throughout. Even when they went to exile, he was still there. God is still here, even during this coronavirus. Not that God has fallen asleep. God has not fallen asleep. God has not gone on vacation. We are not, it doesn't mean that we are, we are alone. We are not alone. God is still with us. And he says he does not change. And that is why you sons and daughters of Jacob are not consumed. And now you see the consummation or being consumed that is used, it is a term that is associated with fire. Now, when you want to destroy something completely, you don't just kill it, you burn it so that there's no trace of it. And, 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 and to a certain extent, the enemies of souls, that's what he wants to do with us, to destroy us so that there's no trace that we even had existed. And so God says, as long as I'm on the throne, I'm governing this domain. No matter what might happen, God says, I, the Lord, I don't change. And that is why you will not be consumed. So as much as what the enemy might do to your life, know that he can only just touch your body. He can never consume you because the Lord do not change. So this is another installment of messages from isolation. May God bless you. And I want to pray for you as you are going through today. Father in heaven, we thank you so much to know that you are a God who does not change. You're a God who's in charge of everything. And Lord, I pray for that individual right there who feels that life is so bad that things are going to fall apart. And so, Lord, I'm asking that you may assure them that you are a God who does not change. You are the Alpha, the Omega. You were there from the beginning. You are with us now. And you will be with us until the end. Be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.